Good afternoon, everyone. Let us open our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Prepare our hearts, we pray, O Lord our God, by your divine power, so that at the coming of Christ your Son, we may be found worthy of the banquet of eternal life, and merit to receive heavenly nourishment from his hands, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines, juicy rich food and pure choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day, it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we looked to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Our responsorial psalm, I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes, he refreshes my soul. 
I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At the time, at that time, Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee, went up on the mountain and sat down there. Great crowds came to him having with them the lame, the blind, the deformed, the mute, and many others. They placed them at his feet, and he cured them. The crowds were amazed when they saw the mute speaking, the deformed made whole, the lame walking, and the blind able to see. And they glorified the God of Israel. Jesus summoned his disciples and said, My heart is moved with pity for the crowd, for they have been with me now for three days and have nothing to eat. I do not want to send them away hungry, for fear they may collapse on the way. The disciples said to him, Where could we ever get enough bread in this deserted place to satisfy such a crowd? Jesus said to them, How many loaves do you have? Seven, they replied, and a few fish. He ordered the crowd to sit down on the ground. Then he took the seven loaves and the fish, gave thanks, and broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied. They picked up the fragments left over, seven baskets full. The Gospel 
of the Lord. May take a little thought and time sitting with these readings, but they teach us how to come to Mass. There's dynamics at our celebration of the Holy Eucharist that we should be attentive to. One of them is very obvious. There's proclamation. And there's also response. In the first reading, there was the proclamation of the redemption that God would bring according to the prophet Isaiah. And it says, Behold on that day, our God, we look to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us be glad and rejoice. He saved us. That's the proclamation, the response, rather. Also, the crowds were amazed, and that is part of their response. And then they are able to say they were all satisfied. So there's a proclamation and there's a response. There's also a giving. I can distinctly remember the first visit I ever had to the Vatican and to the audience of Pope Paul VI. And people did exactly as was explained in the, first, the, the gospel reading, they brought people and put them in the front of the audience hall at the feet of the Holy Father. And he touched them and they touched his vestments. And I'm sure many of those people were there that they might be cured. We bring something ourselves to this Eucharist. As a matter of fact, we bring something so obvious we are not even aware of it. We bring the gifts that God has already given us. We obviously bring the gift of bread, the gift of wine, the gift of water, and the gift of Jesus, the one who's crucified. We bring that gift also. And what we're doing is giving these gifts back to God. And when we say to ourselves that someone at Christmas, for example, or a birthday or another occasion, gives us something marvelous, we almost say, oh, this is too much. Why don't you take this back? I'm not worthy. And in giving Jesus the suffering servant back to the Father, we're saying it humbly that very sense that we're not worthy. But God has God's ways. We do receive the gift. And so these exchanges that regularly happen at Mass are holy and need to be reflected on. I try not, and I hope you try not, to come to Mass without reflecting on what you bring. You can bring your tired self, your frustration, your joy, your generosity. And it turns back on you, and it turns back on me. For one who attends Mass attentively, I dare to find someone who doesn't walk away more satisfied than when they entered. That's the goal of our worship, to praise God with our whole selves. The disciples did two things at the last, at the supper mentioned in this gospel. They went through a crowd of 5,000 people and some way or other they figured out they had seven loaves of bread and two fish. That's quite a search. 
It was quite an activity. And they offered them to our Lord. And then they were active in distributing the multiplication of those fish and loaves. And that's very important because the last verse tells us they picked up the fragments left over, seven baskets full. Our participation at Mass is essential to our own journey and the journey of one another. When one falters, another picks up the response, the song, the, re the rejoicing in God. And so in Advent, we might reflect more deeply on the regular gift of the Eucharist we have. Amen. Mass this afternoon is offered for a Jacqueline Eblocker by John and the family. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the bread we offer you through the earth and work of human hands, become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us the sa your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. Then when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise which now we dare to hope. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as for the end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who died in your mercy. Welcome the men to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. May praise and glorify you, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to you, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Have a pleasant evening.